All right, we are live. Uh, so I'm here with Julia Hanna, and both of us are painting. Uh, Julia, would you like to uh, show your painting a little bit? Um, um, well, I'll show what I can because I, I will tell you a little bit about the way I paint. I don't like to paint on an easel or draw on an easel, so I just leave it flat like that. Mm -hmm. That's just my preferred method. Like, I've tried easels before, and I don't like it because I like to get down and, like, move around. So it's a shamrock, so let me see if I can detach myself from here for a minute. Okay, so it's a shamrock, as everybody can see. Perfect. Like this. See it better? Uh huh. A little okay. bit. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I see it now. Okay. Very so nice. I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just going to kind of leave it like this because this is the best angle for me right now with my setup. It's not going to be real, but we can see your painting. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about your painting? Well, my painting, I, I painted some of it live uh, yesterday. It was on St. Patrick's Day. And this is my grandmother, Clara. Uh, this is my great aunt, Eva. And this is my great uncle, Salik. They are no longer with us. No longer with us. And my grandmother uh, was, was born in 1908. And wow. I believe she died in 2004. So uh, everybody has been liking my monochrome version of this, but I want to see if I can, now that I've got the values dark and light, I want to see if I can add color to it. So if it doesn't work out, I do have still photos of what I have done. And so it's not a lot. It's, it's, it's echoing a little bit. Let's see what's going on. What's happening? Let's check. I don't know why it's echoing. Do you hear echoing still? No, right now I don't. So that I'm was just weird. Gonna... I don't know why I was doing that. That's weird. Okay. So I'm going to, you know, even if I ruin it by adding color, I do have still photos of this as a um, as monochrome. And what I want to do is, you see, Aunt Eva was a blonde. So I'm going to start out by just adding a little bit and seeing whether I can get sort of her, her hair color in there without changing it a lot. Do you see what I'm saying? I see I'm, what you're saying. Yeah, she had, like, when you mean blonde, do you mean like um, light blonde, like white blonde, or like a more ashy color? I'm just curious, like, what shade of blonde was her hair? Probably dirty blonde. She had lots of different shades in her hair. That um, sounds similar to my mom's shade. That, that's why I'm just asking because some people debate with me and they say that my mom didn't really have blonde hair. But I think ashy blonde is blonde, but whatever. I don't know. Well, you've got to understand my family, our view of blonde is not what a Swedish person would think of as blonde. Well, well yeah, same with me. We don't have Swedish blondes. In our, yeah, same here. Same thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> So obviously uh, what we're talking about is a person that has some brown in her hair, um, mm -hmm. but she also has lighter bits, you know, that's all. Yeah, I like that. I just like to get an idea of like the, the luminosity and the color value. That sounds really pretty. Yeah, yeah. so I don't want to change a lot in my painting. I just want to see if I can add a little color. Oh, smart. Like, just to give it, you know what it kind of reminds me of, Aya? It's like when they would take black and white film, even though this is a painting, and then they colorize it, which yeah, I love. That. I love that look. Oh, this is going to be exciting. I'm excited for you. Well, yeah, that's what I want to do. I just don't want to, I don't want to ruin what I already created. So um, that's how I feel about it. I don't think you're going to ruin it. I think both will be interesting like you have the photograph of the black and white values and now you're going to have like the colorized or tinted color of this it's very neat i have a question for you some people i don't know they have an art background and they tell me well i if i don't like a giant i'm going to throw it away and i can just start over again but that's not the way i am like if i invest something in my art 
I want to make something that I'm proud of and I will keep working on that one piece until I'm happy with it, even if it's not as perfect as it could be, because that's how I value art. I don't want to throw away my time and my effort. Like, how do you feel about that? I like to keep my things as much as I can, but that was, you know, before, before I took uh, learning art more seriously, I actually did not paint every day, did not paint every week. And when I made something, it was very valuable to me and mm -hmm. I didn't want to throw it away at all. Not at all. Um, but now that I have been painting more regularly, mm -hmm. I don't actually feel that I can't paint over a bad painting. Oh, no, you can definitely paint over it. But I'm talking about people like when they're drying, they're just like, oh, I hate a drying. I'll throw out lots and lots of drawings until I get it right. No, I don't know. I, I don't do that. I'm much more committed to the drawing. So I try to give it a really good chance. Okay, I love that. I like how this is what I'm saying because that's how I feel too. I just want to see like how other people think about that because I don't know. I'm always right, curious. But, but if I'm out of canvases, I might take the, the painting that I'm least attached to and paint <laughs> over it so that I, you know, don't run out of money too fast. You know what I'm saying? Okay, that's a good idea. And also, too, another point is we now have websites, photos, like we can you know, memorialize, memorialize the painting. So like you took a photograph yeah. of it. So that's a good point. Yeah. So here we have what was a sailor suit. Um, I accidentally got some red on this. But, um, you know, it was very popular at one time to dress young girls in sailor suits. Yeah, you know, it, it was up until... The nautical style was very, it still is in some circles. It just, that was a very big thing at one time. There's actually an organization here in Redland it's called the Kimberly Girls, and they still dress in nautical, like sailor suit dresses when they have their meetings on Saturdays. Yeah, I, I know that, for instance, in Japan and other places in Asia, a lot of girls' schools outfits, you know, they, they are required to wear a uniform. Mm -hmm. And their uniform, their school uniform, is uh, it, very reminiscent of a sailor suit. Um, but uh, I, I remember that I saw a lot of pictures of the Tsar's daughters, mm -hmm. you know, the and they were dressed in sailor suits. So this, yeah, that's a good point. So can you tell me a little bit more about the each of the ladies that you're painting from your family? Like, is did any of them have an interest in certain academic study or like certain subjects? Yes, well, Aunt Eva, great Aunt Eva, was always interested in medicine. Now she did not get to study medicine herself, although she did become a physical therapist. Wow. Um, but she married a doctor and her daughter became a doctor and her grandson is a doctor. Wow, that's pretty neat. Yeah. And my, my grandmother, Clara, um, studied, um, studied mathematics and she got a master's degree. Wow, that's just really neat. But she didn't marry a mathematician. She married a philologist. Oh, interesting. I'm sure they had interesting discussions in their household. There was this lady. Her son was so precocious, and he knew about computers, and he talked like a little adult. And then I figured out why. Oh, um, they're into the arts, and they um, the mom had some sort of a science career, but she also liked to study the piano on the side. I'm like, oh, wow. They know a little bit about everything. And their child was like a mini adult at the age of five. Mm -hmm.
So you shared a link with me about art school versus art classes, like technical. Um, so what is that all about? The whole thing with just taking art classes versus actually taking more technical art classes? Well, you see, if you go to college and you go and take art classes there, and chances are the art department is not going to teach you anything that will get you a job eventually. Unless, uh -huh. you're, unless you're going to be an art teacher that's at school or something, it's not going to teach you how to be an artist. It's kind of the same way. The reason I wanted to be a novelist and I didn't, did not, um, I knew for a fact that I didn't want to take, um, I didn't want to take literature classes in college because uh -huh. I didn't agree with the, uh, I just didn't agree with the philosophy. Oh yes, I know what we're talking about. Um, the way that literature's taught. I mean, I my degree was in history, but I took a few literature classes, and I always thought, wow, um, just the slants, like, and the way that it's it's quite fascinating. So what are your thoughts on, like, do you think there's a correlation between the way art is taught and literature is taught at the university versus a technical degree or just being a novelist? Yeah, I don't know that there is a, a place to go to learn the skills of a novelist besides staying home and writing. Mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of art school, there actually are some very technical skills that can be learned. Um, and so there are, you know, if you are a young person and you're looking for a career in art and you want not to go around lecturing other people about art, but you just want to do art, that's what you want to do with your life, mm -hmm. then I would, um, what I would recommend is looking at art schools and seeing what they offer and also seeing what their graduates are doing. And if there's an art school where the majority of the graduates are employed, um, you know, like in Disney or Hallmark or mm -hmm. any of those businesses that actually use artists, then you might want to look into that as a possibility. That's a good point because I feel if you're going to obtain this degree, you want it to be useful. You want to have a trade. You don't want to just end up being the lawyer, the artist that's working at Starbucks with your $50,000 student loan. You know, like it's good to actually. Yeah, it's not good to take any student loans. I wouldn't recommend for anyone in any profession to take a student loan. Uh, yeah, no, they're highway robbery, believe me. Like, to pay it off. You just have to actually save up the money. And then when you have the money, you'll know whether you want to spend it on that or not. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? No, I see what you're saying. I think that's a good point. But a lot of people, it's not being pushed that way. Like, it's being pushed like, oh, like, you come from a low income family. Your family can take out these loans. And that's how they, but they never. They never put it this way that maybe you could save the money to obtain the degree and not go into debt. You see what I'm saying? Like, well, it used to be, you know, there were families where there would be one person who wanted to go to school. And it was not the whole family. It was just one person. And, uh, you know, nobody in that person's family had ever gone to school before. Um and he would just work until he could afford to pay for the classes that he wanted to take. That's a good point. And then you don't have the debt, and then you know what you really want to you know, right. major in or what program you want to study. You actually want to. It's not like, oh, my parents want me to do this, but now they have a debt or I have I it's just when the person when the person who is getting the service is actually paying for the service. They tend to be more critical of what the service is or whether they want to buy it or not. So That's it's the true. same thing. Uh, somebody might tell you, you need braces. Uh, 
um, or something like that. Well, if the child wants to work for braces, sure, let's do that. But if it's something that's being forced on on the entire family because somebody says you need braces, that's probably a scheme to make money for the dentist. Oh, it is for sure. Well, let me, the braces straight. I love my teeth. They're straight. I have a little bit of an open bite, but my dad, he's very prudent about money. And when the dentist told my mom, oh, you need braces. My dad's like, no, her teeth are fine. So as an adult, guess what happened? I grew to love my teeth. I don't want to, I mean, I get it. Some people want the perfect um, model's teeth, but they told me a few years ago, if I wanted to get braces, I could pay for this really expensive procedure, have jaw surgery. And I'm like, I don't want to spend my money on that. I'm really actually happy with my teeth. So for me, like, I just didn't see the point. But anyhow, that's my take on it. And I don't even think braces are as important in other cultures as the U.S., but I could be wrong about that. I don't know. Have you, you heard about that debate, the braces debate? Well, my parents didn't get me braces. I didn't get my daughter braces. Um, we just thought that was bogus. That's what my dad thought too. He said it's bogus. He said that same thing. Like he didn't see the point. He said, can you chew? Um, are you able to chew with your teeth? Do you not have cavities? Then you're fine. <laughs> and he was right. I feel like in the end really. Yeah. And if there is something about our diet that makes us um, even require any kind of you know, I, I really think our diet is what gets us in trouble with our teeth. Oh, like with cavities and all that? Yes, that's true. So if we just eat better, then we 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 can be like the Eskimo who have perfect teeth. That's true. Eskimo. They don't have any. And don't they yeah. have straight teeth too? Like their teeth are really, I've heard really good things about their teeth. Yeah, their their teeth are great. They are straight. Uh, they fit in their mouth correctly, <laughs> you know, and, and it's because they eat primarily fat. Mm -hmm. And if you, if your diet consists not of sugar, not of carbohydrates, but mostly of fat, some protein, but not too much protein either, mm -hmm. mostly fat, you're going to do so much better. Yeah, you're not going to have as many cavities as what it seems like. Right. So that's that's just how it is. Well, I think the dentists, to be honest with you, they have candy at the dentist. Not that this is about dentistry, but I always thought that was kind of ironic. Oh, you're promoting candy eating. You want returning clients. <laughs> well, my dentist never had candy, but they also didn't tell us that we should eat more meat and less uh, bread. They just would not tell us this. They probably didn't know or they knew or they just don't care because they won't return business. I mean, honestly, people like to make money. Like, I'm not going to. It's just anyway. Um, so what else was it about this art topic that. Like, what else about the technical versus art school debate or topic do you think is worth merit? Well, I I, I sent you a link to a very young girl, you know, okay. and I it's not like I'm thinking I'm going to art school. I'm definitely not. <laughs> I've gone to enough schools. I've gotten enough higher education. Thank you very much. But, you know, I have a daughter who's now finishing college. Someday I might have grandchildren. And this is what I would say to my grandchildren, really, is find out what it is that you're really interested in, you know, what you really want to do. And if you don't have any interests yet, that's fine. You don't have to decide anything. Mm -hmm. It takes a while sometimes for people to find themselves and find their, their preferences in life. Um, just don't commit to anything until you know what you want. But once you do know what you want, um, also consider what will happen after, you know, what happens after college, what happens after um, art school or law school or any of those things. And just have a, a plan that goes a little bit further than I just want to go to art school, you know, 
or For sure. Or yeah, no, like think about, well, if let's say you get the degree and then you don't like working in the field, what's your secondary plan, so to speak? Well, yeah, and what's your your first plan too? Because a lot of times people get degrees and they don't know what their plan is. Right now, because there's been uh, inflation in uh, degrees, you can almost not do anything with a BA or BS. You can't. Um, that's pretty much it. Like in California, like I'm not trying to be rude or anything, but a lot of people have degrees here. They're not exactly working in their field. In fact, that's the big refrain of people who haven't gone to college versus people who have. I had somebody say, well, why even go? Because I know a lot of people that have a degree in this, this, and the other, and they're not using it. So why would I waste my money? I, people tell me that, but I don't think they're the most academically inclined people either. Well, I'm not saying don't go. I'm saying just try to understand what you think you're going to get out of it. Yeah, are monetarily. You, are you going? No, I mean, all in every way, in every respect. Are you going to learn something? Uh, are you going to learn a trade or is this just for academic uh, pursuit because you want to be a well-rounded person? You can do that, um, but just ask yourself, are you willing to pay for that? You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> if, if you are just going in there for your academic benefit so that you will be a well-rounded person and will be able to discuss world affairs or be able to do higher math just for the fun of it, um, that's fine. You can do that. But then how much money are you willing to pay for that academic thing? You know what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. That's a good point. A lot of people, you know, they were told that if they get a college degree that their earning power will be greater. That's not a <laughs> it's not true. It's a lie. Yeah. So, so please don't you know, don't sell your soul for something that's not true. Okay. Well, here's another thing. Thing. This is another thing too. Oh, they're going to raise the minimum wage. And this is actually a discussion my friend and I had, and she works in the medical field and she's not even a political person, but she said, what is the point of them raising the minimum wage? Like a lot of people that obtain nursing degrees said, so now everybody's going to be making almost what I made to obtain my degree. It's just interesting. Like, not that it's about that, but it's just, I find it a bit absurd, really. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. You, you want to be in a situation where you're not in debt and no matter what happens, you're going to be okay. And if you are artistically inclined, you might want to even be in a situation where if you want to quit, you can quit, you know, Sure, uh, work for a living when you need to, but you don't want to have to do that for the rest of your life forever and ever, do you? Probably not. I mean, it's not very enjoyable. And here's the thing: a lot of a lot of careers nowadays, you're answerable to the man. And what do I call that? Oh, you have to have a certain opinion, and you can't deviate from that opinion. And it's just interesting. It's kind of like how much of yourself do you have to sell just to make a paycheck? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it. So of course you have to be financially responsible. And especially if you have um, people depending on you, you, you have to, you know, you have to take care of them. So I'm not, I'm not at all advocating being a bad person. Oh, just no, no, we're not. I don't even think you're saying that. Oh, okay. Okay. But once you've, you know, paid your debt to society, so to speak, <laughs> and um, you have made sure anybody dependent on you is fed and you're not, you know, shirking your duty, uh, you might want to plan to have some time during your life to develop yourself, you know, to develop your own interests, to do what you like to do. Mm -hmm. That makes a good point. Now, have you shared this anywhere? Um, I could do that right now. I hadn't shared it at the very beginning, but let me go ahead and do that. Okay. So I can see what I'm doing.
And one of the questions um, that people sometimes get asked when they say they want to be an artist is, well, why do you have to do that all the time? Why not just do that in your spare time and make lots of money doing something else? But in order to answer that question about the spare time, you have to sort of have some kind of an idea of what spare time is. What is spare time? You know, because we only have so many hours in a day. Well, to me, there really is no concept of spare time because I feel like all my time counts for something because I feel all my time has value. I've mm -hmm. always hated the idea of killing time. I feel like you need to make time for what you want to do, but I don't really believe in the concept of spare time. I just don't believe in that. Like, I don't believe in the concept of spare change either. Yeah, that that's, that's exactly it. That's why, you know, when they tell you, oh, you don't need all your money. Well, what do you know about how much money I need of my own money? I mean, not somebody else's. There, yeah, and what I've learned over time is I don't think that anybody is a good, more virtuous person because they give to charity. Because I know a lot of people like my dad who actually, I don't know, he wants to help people on his own. It's not even something I really want to do, but he would just help random people and like get them lunch or do all sorts of things because he wanted to do that, but he didn't get any accolades for donating to charity or, or you know, there's an equivalent to with taxes as well. Like, oh, well, we will be a better society when we pay this amount of tax and this corporation pays more tax. But that's not necessarily true when you look at how California is not use, utilizing their tax money or how it is being utilized in a very bad way. So I just would like to see less tax across the board. And I don't think anybody has to donate to a specific charity. I say you should help people if you want to, and then helping people will be more legitimate and much more thought out, right? Yes. And, you know, uh, I, I really like the, uh, the model in the Book of Ruth where, yeah, you can give to the poor, but the poor should pick it up themselves they should do the work of picking the food, the leftover food that, you know, the rich person didn't get around to picking. Um, that's totally reasonable. And that's how it used to be up until modern times. People had pride. They wouldn't want to take a handout. Well, mostly in general. Right. Up until and, modern. Yeah. So, so when they're doing that, when they're picking the leftover stuff, the leftover stuff doesn't get wasted. And at the same time, nobody is stealing from the rich to give to the poor. You know, nobody's making yeah. some work in order to give somebody else something. And were, also, go ahead. When we, okay, what I was going to say is when we require a company to pay more taxes, it's going to raise the price of everything. And I hate to say it. I know there's a lot of educated people that they, they might have various degrees and everything, but they believe that they say, well, taxation is not the problem. We, sh we can't like discuss that. We need to separate that. But this company should pay more tax because they're dodging it. But I said, Hey, wait a minute. The whole problem is, is the tax system. That's the problem. But they just want people to pay more tax. They don't want to look at the actual problem. Yeah. And, and the fact of the matter is, when you're a low-income person, the biggest tax you have to pay is Social Security tax. If they just mm -hmm. did away with that, people would just get to keep more of what they earn. Guess what? When you live in California, it's not even Social Security tax. It's um, state sales tax county sales tax which is a lot by the way and then you have the property tax and they were trying they had a new proposition on the ballot where they wanted to raise that even more where they were going to take let's say you bought your home in 1980 and it was like twenty six thousand dollars because guess what back in 1980 there were homes in california that were twenty six thousand dollars but your home could be valued at five hundred thousand dollars now so instead of paying the property tax that you already 
always paid based on what you purchased your home for in 1980, it was going to scale up to the price that it would be on the market in 2021. And how is that fair? So I don't know what to tell people. Nobody thinks about this issue. Well, I'm sure the people who are having to pay the taxes think about it. Yeah, and I don't want to make it all about tax or political stuff. I'm not being political at all. I'm just saying um, I would like it where we just didn't have to pay as many taxes. And, okay, if you want to be part of a group that, I don't know, has a volunteer fire department where you pay in for it. And, I mean, I don't want to say I'm going that far, but I almost kind of feel like it because they're not really doing anything anyway with these taxes. Like, we see the roads, and some of the roads haven't been paved since the 1930s or 40s. So, they said yeah. that this money was for the road or the school, and they're not really utilizing it for what they're doing is they're buying consulting firms in my state um, to like supposedly design this project, do this project, and some of them finish it, and that's where all the money goes. So it's basically crony capitalism. <laughs> yeah. uh, not to make it political, but that's just what it is. And, and oh, this is what I was going to say about Uber. It is actually legitimate. Okay, so... You used to be able to take Uber, and it used to be really affordable. It'd be like three dollar, um, three miles, like a nine dollar ride, which isn't too bad if you don't want to have a car and you just occasionally want to take Uber. Now it's like thirty three dollars if you want them to come pick you up, and wow. that change happens all of a sudden at the beginning of the pandemic, and with them wanting to give more. And all the Uber drivers told me that they didn't. Anyway, I'm gonna let that go, but it is interrelated, and people keep telling me it's not but they don't know, they don't really understand the situation and they don't care to research why maybe the Uber drivers wanted more work and they liked it the way it was, but some people in bigger cities wanted to dictate how it should be for everybody. Right. Summer says, okay. I'm sorry, I got off topic there. I didn't mean to. No, that's yeah. okay. No, I'm just saying Summer's agree with you. But, you know, I just, I don't even really care about the political side of these things. I just think, like, well, if you could make it go back to art, like, you should be able to do what you want with your money and time, I think, personally. Yeah. But a lot of people, you know, a lot of people are, like, behind the time in terms of they really want their kids to get that, you know, middle class job. And they think that they know what they have to do. Right now, a lot of people are telling their children they have to get into STEM uh, in order to do well. <laughs> what do you think about that? You know, the whole STEM thing, I actually, I wasn't part of that scene, but it is becoming really big. You probably know more about STEM than I do. I haven't really looked into it because I left the education field quite a few years ago. I know STEM is the biggest thing. They had a 16 year old girl teaching STEM classes on the weekend. Um, I thought it was kind of strange that they're teaching four year old STEM classes. What is your thoughts on that? Like, because honestly, I haven't even looked that much into it. Look, there are some people who are just naturally interested in that, and that's great. Mm -hmm. But they're trying to create a situation where everybody suddenly goes into STEM. Well, the moment they do that, whatever advantage there used to be will go away. You know what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. So, yeah, no, if you make it, if you regularize it and make it available to everyone, you're going to have a glut of people that have that skill. So I do get what you're saying. I honestly, I just don't know much about STEM because I didn't really look into it. It wasn't on my radar. So I don't want to sound like I'm ignorant about it. But honestly, I haven't looked much into STEM. <laughs> well, I just thought it was strange they were pushing it on such young children. That was the part that seemed kind of weird to me. I don't see how a preschooler is going to want to take a STEM class. Preschoolers want to color. Usually, and they want to play with their friends. They don't want to be in a STEM class usually. And I, what I heard about it was a lot of the kids were not paying attention, and they weren't that interested. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, let's not stereotype all three-year-olds. I knew a three-year-old who actually spent all his time thinking about numbers, and he grew to be a genius. Of um, course, that's what I'm saying. There are kids that want to do that, but those are the kids that are going to take those classes. 
and study those subjects on their own anyway. Oh, yes, exactly. They don't need to take a special class because they have it going on in their head. So the idea that you could take people and turn them all into geniuses, that's not going to happen. Okay, so is that the whole point of the STEM classes? See, like I said, I haven't researched that topic. They want to make more young geniuses. Is that the whole premise behind it? I'm just curious because, like I said, I haven't really looked into STEM. Well, uh, it's it's because they feel all the jobs are in uh, computing, in pharmacology, you know, all those high-tech jobs. They think that... Yeah. That's where all the money is. Everybody wants to go work for Google. Or, you know, if they're not going to be a professor, they want them to go to Google or Apple um, mm -hmm. and be working for one of those major tech companies. Interesting. And the fact of the matter is a lot of people from the East a lot of Asians, including people from Israel. I'm, I'm, I don't want you to think that I'm saying this as a, a just a East Asians, but. No, but like, it sounds like Israelis also, are STEM classes pretty big in Israeli culture these days? Like, I'm just curious, like. It's not STEM classes. It's just being intellectual enough to do math. Mm -hmm. Okay. The big. I get what you're saying. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Which is great, because honestly, I have no interest in math. I don't. Okay, I, well, I'm, I'm not the math person in our family. I yeah. am the language person in our family. That's but, good. Uh, and, you know, my grandmother, Clara, was a math person, but she married a language person, okay? Mm -hmm. And he was the one who brought home the bacon with his mm -hmm. language stuff. <laughs> well, good. See, there you go. Okay, so, but anyway. It's very easy if you come from a country with a good education system where studying and intelligence, uh, you know, when I say intelligence, I, I mean. Like intellectual, you know, like, like language. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I know what you're saying. Like Intellectual yeah. pursuits uh, are at a premium and people really value that. So this is generations, generations after generations, these people have been breeding academics. They have been breeding people who are good at math. So now they're able to come here to the U.S. and get the really good jobs. Okay. That's fine. And I think it's fair. They have the skills. I'm not begrudging anybody who has the skills to do that. Right. Yeah. Good for them. Right. Well, Nobody was, I wasn't suggesting you were disparaging. No, them. but I think, so, I think some people do, though, honestly, though. I, I think there are some people in this world who are jealous. I'm, I've heard it because they don't come from, let, let's say, an academic, a mathematical background or a family that, you know, has instilled those values in their children. And they seem to have some sort of jealousy or they want those things for themselves, but they haven't endeavored to study those subjects or just spend their time in those fields. So I, I do see some jealousy. I don't I don't think ordinary Americans are jealous. Well I, in my I guess in the circles where I come from, I've seen people that are jealous. It's like they're like, well why did do, why do those people get that? Why can't I have that? But they're not putting themselves in those fields to study those subjects. Well, they're just not interested in those subjects. And I think it's okay for every person to follow their dream, follow their heart. A lot of a lot of people come from farm families and all they really want to do is farm work. And somehow that's been taken away from them. Yes, this is horrible. Like, why can't you have a family farm anymore? Oh, why? Because all the, cor the corporations on the farm, so that's the reason. Yeah, so, so it's a complicated topic, but... What the liberals are doing is they're they're trying to push people into situations that are not right for them. You know, they're trying to say, oh, 
we, we need so many people from this ethnicity and so many people from that ethnicity studying this thing. Mm -hmm. Which I don't think anybody should study a certain subject unless they want to study that subject. Right. Yeah. So, like I said, I hadn't researched the STEM, you know, subjects. I, I just knew those classes were becoming a bit more popular with school age families. So, okay. this is yeah. First of all, let's stop calling it STEM. Okay, science, technology, okay. and what what else? Engineering and okay, math. engineering. Like I said, I don't even know this. Is, like you're kind of telling me more about this than I have ever looked up because it's just it's it's, it's just, not like it's a new thing. We've had science, technology, engineering, and math for really. Oh, long I know. Time. I know we have, but what I'm saying is, you're telling me about these how people want to force children that might not be interested into it. I haven't really been paying attention to that. Like all I heard, like when I was in the education field, which was uh, over ten years ago, really was that, oh, more people should study science. They didn't call it STEM back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It wasn't like pressure either. It was just like, oh, more people should study science. Too many people have English degrees. And that's all I heard. So what's happening with uh, uh, affirmative action is that all these people from Asian families come in ready-made for STEM because the generations upon generations of them have been doing it. Um, it's been selected for in their, uh, you know, in their education and in their lives. And the people who got married to the better spouses were the ones who were good at it and so on and so forth. So it's been selected for over a really long period of time. Mm -hmm. And so because of this, affirmative action says, hey, you have to be twice as good if you come from one of those families. That's not fair, and that's not right. And also, it kind of perpetuates this issue with how certain groups of people are being discriminated against, and it's legally acceptable. Yeah. Honestly, it, and not to go deep into it, I think we'll talk a little bit. I don't know if you want to talk about it today, but it is something that's been on my mind lately. Yeah, well, it's been on my mind, too. But I think the other side of it is that all sorts of kids who, for whatever reason, like to draw, are being discouraged from doing that. Don't you think so? Oh, yeah. Nobody can draw if they want to. Like, can you draw what you want at school? Absolutely not. Like, they don't. Okay. When I was a kid, I had teachers that weren't so rigid. They were like, if you want to draw, you can draw. If you want to paint, you can. Like, you had time to do those things. But now um, they don't really allow that and if they do get to paint and draw they had this thing called meet the masters where the kids could reproduce like a monet painting and they could do that maybe once a month and it was just limited unless you're going to a good private school maybe maybe a good private school has these opportunities to study art i'm not sure i i really don't know um i heard for instance that some people when they do notice they have a child who is extremely talented in art will just have the child drop out of school because that child really needs to be, you know, painting 24 seven and you can't do that and do your schoolwork both, you know? No, you can really only focus on one thing. That's another thing I hate actually, the multitasking society where they push this, um, oh, you need to multitask, you need to be all these different things. But if you're doing, there's something wrong with having multiple interests, but let's say you want to actually learn how to paint very well or play the piano. If it'd be really good if a kid, just like with gymnasts, it's funny that with sports, like it's accepted, oh, they can study most of the day that sport, but I don't hear most people say that their child could paint all day. Do you ever hear that? Well, there was this uh, one, one person on YouTube, this girl, who from a very early age showed a great deal of talent. Um, and of course they made it out that it was God and all this other stuff. So I, you have to take that with a grain of salt, but her parents, when they saw how great she was at painting, just took her out of school and let her paint all day long. And of course that's what helps, you know, that's how you learn. Of course. Well, another thing, though, maybe with the lockdown, I don't mean I haven't really looked into this, but I wonder if more kids are becoming 
like in tune with our artistic abilities. Maybe this has given more kids an opportunity. I mean, things are slowly opening up here in California, which by the way, is pretty funny because it wasn't going to happen unless, oh, somebody had a fire under their pants and recall all of a sudden, oh, we're going to open up. Oh my God, I don't want to not be reelected. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all that's about. He, he might get recalled anyway, which, you know, good. I don't care. Um, but magically, all of a sudden, oh, we're going to open things up again. But I wonder if just maybe the only benefit to maybe not having to attend the public school all the time is maybe some of these young people had an opportunity to do art more. Maybe that was a good, maybe that was a silver lining that came out of this. Well, I mean, if they had the opportunity to do whatever it is that they're really into, then that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and for different people, that's different things. You know, we're not all born the same. We don't all prefer the same things. And I think individuality is important. It definitely is. But is it allowed anymore? I feel like sometimes if you don't say the right things, oh, man, like you're going to be canceled. Like, And it's just becoming so absurd. So I've gotten to the point. I just don't even want to pay attention to what's going on in the news. And I didn't even know about some things that happened this week. And I'm like, well, am I better off because I finally found out? Probably not. <laughs> I'm happier like reading about the Ottoman Empire these days. Yeah. Well, what did you learn about the Ottoman Empire? Well, just what I've been reading more about, you know, different people. Like, yes, they were slaves in the Ottoman Empire. But the interesting thing about the Ottoman Empire was after seven years you're released from slavery and then you can learn a trade and these people settled you know mostly in the Turkish you know part of modern Turkey and they contributed to the society and I'm just reading more about how multicultural Turkey really is just because of some odd series of events and they did it pretty well up until recently where you have you know, an Islamic government that's trying to squash that. But multiculturalism is alive and well in Turkey, and it was never an issue. Like, people are from many different backgrounds. You even have African people in Turkey. And you know who it was that was offended by um, some of the African bands in Turkey? Oh, it was the white Americans from the embassy. But in Turkey, it was no big deal. Like, they were playing in jazz bands and pubs in Ankara in the 1950s, and nobody cared. Because their society is just multicultural. It wasn't like a big issue, really. Yeah. I just thought, you know, there's things that they make out to be big issues here. I was just kind of reading about all that lately. And well, you, oh, know, you mentioned emancipation. And, you know, every culture in which there were slaves also had rules about how they get to be set free. Yes. Every culture. Every culture, but... I, I will say American culture. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to apologize for how horrible the slave trade was in the U S and Brazil. It was horrible. Like, no, it was really bad, but at least in Turkey, like the Ottoman empire, I'm not saying I agree with what they did, like how they entrapped and enslaved people was horrible. But here's the thing, you know, most of the slaves were white. Most of them came from Slavic speaking countries, which is why Slavic, comes from the word, root word for slave. I mean, I don't know if people realize that, though. People you know? do realize that. But, you know, I, I was reading about, well, you know, not reading in depth, but I saw that Harriet Tubman's uh, original name was Araminta, which was interesting to me because it was the name of uh, a woman in a poem about love that um, I used. I used that poem in... Our Lady of Kaifeng, you know, mm -hmm. part one. But also uh, in the bit of information that I saw about Harriet Tubman, I guess it because in February we celebrate um, Black History Week. So I, I saw that she was married to a, a freed young man, um, a, freed, a free man who was black. Mm -hmm. uh, and it said in that, a bit of information that at that time there were many free black men okay? there were actually yes that there definitely were like people some people did free their slaves it was very common 
Yes, and, and, and there could be lots of reasons for it. The slaves might have uh, bought their own freedom. Um, somebody else might have bought their freedom for them. Or uh, the master might find, you know, that he just didn't want to be a master anymore um, and would free them. So uh, anyway, I was wondering why her husband, you know, who was a free man, why he wouldn't, you know, make a deal to free her, you know? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I see what you're saying. That's a good point. Like, maybe I mean, because he couldn't. I mean, legally, maybe he wasn't able to with the laws at the time. That could be a possibility. I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on it? Well, I don't know. I mean, were they legally married? Were they secretly married? They said they were married. They might not have been legally married. They might have just had a ceremony that wasn't recognized by the law. Because if you're a free person, technically, are you? I don't think you could legally marry a slave. That's pretty oh, much that. Yeah. Okay, so it seems to me that whoever is writing these little tidbits of information is leaving stuff out that's really important to understand. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think? Like, what is your like? Are you researching to figure out, like, or did you find out the answer to this? I have not yet found out the answer to it. But I am interested because I have this other book that I'm reading about slaves in Louisiana. And, the you know, at one time in Louisiana, there were more slaves than there were free people, which I think is quite interesting as a phenomenon. Uh, yeah, it is. Also, too, another thing that's very interesting is a lot of the Irish people who came in, they weren't like that were brought in. They were brought in as indentured servants and they were actually treated pretty much like slaves, except, yes, after seven years, they could, they could obtain their freedom. But there were white women that were marrying um, black slaves. And I guess it was the locals who were offended by this. They were so offended that they had to make a law against it. I thought that was interesting. I was like, wow. Yeah, those miscegenation laws were yeah, ridiculous. they were ridiculous. Yeah, they're very ridiculous, but it's it didn't stop it. Like people still, I mean, people still had illicit like illegal relationships. You know. They well, I mean, there were also legal ones. You know, such as a plassage. You remember that in? Uh, oh in yes, yes. So. Uh, but this is, of course, a free woman. A free yeah, she's woman. a free woman, so that's going to be different. Yeah, a free person. black woman. But I, I just don't think that you could. I don't, I don't understand these stories about people marrying people who are free marrying slaves. That just seems weird. Because if you love somebody, you would want to free that person, wouldn't you? I would think so, unless there was some sort of liability that they couldn't, or there was a law. I've heard in the past that maybe you couldn't legally, like maybe they were married, but not legally recognized. You see what I'm saying? Because that's what okay. I had heard. But I could be wrong. I could be 100% wrong. But I thought a free person couldn't legally marry someone that had a slave status. Now, we can maybe have a commenter that could correct that, but that's what I thought. But if I'm wrong, I admit it, but that's what I thought I had read before, in some areas anyway. Yeah, well, I don't claim that I know the answer. It just, it was a question that it seemed to me anybody who was writing information about that ought to put that into the little squib about it. You would think so, but maybe they didn't consider that point. Maybe it was just not something that was on their radar. But you think about it because you're you were a lawyer, so you're good with details and you're a linguist. So you're like you think about the details, but I'm thinking a lot of people just didn't consider it. Well, I mean, if you're into the history and if you realize that not every black person was a slave ever. Well, no, they weren't. Actually, in the North, there were many people that were black, that were free. There were people that were black that came to the Americas that were free. Not everybody that was from Africa that came to the Americas was a slave. That, that, that's oh, true. That, I mean, that, that's absolutely true. And that's something that I just feel that we are overlooking right now, um, that people are just not aware of it anymore. So they think, oh, if you had black ancestors, they had to be slaves. And uh, so every white person 
was probably a slaveholder, and um, and now everybody has to apologize to everybody else. Well, about <laughs> nobody has to apologize about history. Like I think those evil, the evil slave owners that were malicious to their people that they took care of. Like yes, they they would need to apologize. But here's the other end of the the other end of the dime. Everybody that's African American also has the slave owner ancestry. Like they do, like they're also part white. A lot of people that are African American have white ancestry and they can trace their ancestry back to the slave owners as well. So it's not like they are not related to those people. Those people also are their ancestors. So they, yeah. it, it's kind of like you'd be hating yourself. You can just say that your ancestors did things that you didn't agree with, but here's the other problem. Every society has had a form of slavery and we are watching or you've already watched, we're watching um, Mr. Sunshine. And in Korea, everybody's Korean, but they had a slave class that they treated really horribly, horrible. I would say the slaves in Korea were treated probably worse than slaves in the United States, just the brutality of some of those scenes. I mean, really. But it wasn't based on race at all. And no, it I wasn't. Just, it wasn't I based on race, yeah. I don't think people know if they see somebody on the street today, in in uh, Korea, I don't think they know whether his ancestors were slaves or slave owners or both or whatever. I don't think they even think about that. I mean, in the U.S., yes, people do think about it. But here's the thing. I don't think any modern person needs to apologize for what somebody did in the past that was bad. They just don't because they're not that person. That's absurd. That's ludicrous. But if somebody is of African ancestry and they're saying, oh, you need to apologize. They should actually watch good documentaries and good genealogy research with people who are um, African American. They're like, well, hey, I also have slave owners in my family tree too. So you can say that, but you're also criticizing part of your lineage, you know? It's right. You have to look at it both ways. Like you can't just say, oh, like I just because nobody is 100% anything. And in Africa, you had slave owners, like kingdoms that took people from East Africa and brought them to West Africa. And the slave trade was predicated on black people enslaving other black people, just like with the Arabs, they enslaved white people. And they also enslaved, I mean, I don't. It wasn't race-based. Well, why don't we just say slavery was not race-based and that's it, you know. It wasn't, um, but there are, there are people who do, I'm not going to apologize for people that have like racial prejudice towards different ethnic, because there were people that did see others as inferior if they weren't white. This is true. Like, I'm not going to apologize for those people. There's a lot of that in the world. Those people are wrong. So no, slavery is not race-based, but yeah, there were some people that are racist, but the irony is some people that didn't own slaves were far more racist because they, were, you know what they were offended by? They were offended that the slave owners had children with the people that were black. And, yeah. and but they're claiming not to be racist. Well, that's kind of creepy, you know? Yeah. I don't, there's a lot of bad things in history, a lot of brutality, but nowadays we still have a slave trade. What about what's happening to the Uyghurs in China? They're being treated like slaves. And nobody cares. Well, listen, we're all slaves right now. If we have to pay Social Security <laughs> because we don't get to keep the money that we make, you know. I mean, that's true to a point. And if you don't pay your taxes, like you can't do that. You can't just be like, oh, I'm not going to pay my taxes. Like, I mean, you could, but <laughs> there might be a repercussion. So you can't choose to opt out of society, whereas at one time, hey, if you wanted to go live in the mountains and just do your own thing, you could do that. Why can't somebody just go and live in the mountains and do their own thing if they want to? Oh, you're camping on public land for more than six days. That's not allowed. Well, I think that's exactly what public land is for. If we have to have something public, it must belong to everyone. They shouldn't act like it belongs to no one. Yeah, it's, it's a, I mean, there's just a lot of interesting things, things that are hypocritical. I don't feel that the left is more righteous. Actually, I'm getting kind of tired. Like, say, I just read something where this person said, well, these people, they don't like anybody and they are smug. And it was just really disgusting what that person wrote. And it made me kind of sick. 
So I just said, this is gross. It's really gross, but they don't know how gross it is. But they say that they're caring and righteous and good. And I'm not even going to go into it, but, you know, it's the people that keep saying that they're caring about people because of one thing that they do that others don't. And I don't feel like they're caring at all because they keep saying really disgusting things, disgusting comments towards other people. Yeah. And how is that compassionate? Like you're saying something really mean and disgusting and you don't even know like why somebody, you don't even know the reason. Okay. Like there was a guy and he wasn't, like they keep stereotyping. They're like, well, it's only like why Republican men that have a problem with wearing the mask, but there are some people that are not white and they're not Republican and they have a breathing problem, which by the way, yeah. it's not easy to breathe in the mask. I know everybody's like, it's so easy. It is so easy. And they keep telling us we need to wear thicker ones now, like even thicker, like two of them together. And I'm like, yeah. I'm not going to do that. Because one of them is just horrible enough, but like they're saying too, I don't know, like I guess for people that just breathe very easily, like good. But for me, I know like I'm always having a problem with it and I wear it because I follow the rules and it's not that I don't follow the rules, but I can't really hate on someone that doesn't want to wear it or feels claustrophobic. But they keep saying that that person is selfish, but then they won't even take like there was actually which I find appalling. There was actually a young African-American woman who says she can't wear the mask in Florida because it brings back memories of when a relative locked her in a car and she nearly died of, you know, heat mm. exposure, but nobody cares. But anyway, you know, I know that's not what the topic's about. It's just the amount of judgment in this country. Yeah, people right are, are way, way, way too judgmental. So sometimes people are judgmental just because somebody likes art. They think they might not be you know, applying themselves. Yeah. And I don't like any kind of judgment, but I feel like the people that are willing to dole it out and say, I'm a good person, you know, the whole virtue thing, but you're oh, not yeah. a good person. They're not nice. Like they say things that are just really snarky and just really like snobby, but yet they're always like, Oh, I'm anti-bullying. I'm such a nice person. I'm so good. I like, I'm, I don't like it when people are mean, but they're saying like really mean things that are just gross that make me like think, well, I'm so glad I don't look at Facebook every day anymore. Like I don't miss it really. I don't, I'm not deleting it, but I don't miss it when I don't look at it because of those kind of things. Cause every time you log in, you're like, Oh, that's it. <laughs> That's all we ever talk about. But how about we talk about actually art and science and what you want to study or learn, not like what you should study and learn. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I watch Dr. Romani and I don't think she's a bad person, but she uh, probably lives around Los Angeles and she uh, is influenced by the values of the people around her. So mm -hmm. she talking about the mask in terms of okay we don't actually know the science we don't know if the mask helps or not it was nice that she said that but then she said but if you go into somebody's church and or mosque or synagogue um and they ask you to wear something that their religion says you should um then you'll wear it because you're a nice person and you don't want to offend these people. That's what she said. Well, I agree with her on that. If I go into a, like a, a Greek Orthodox church and they say I have to cover my head to be there. Well, I know that I don't have to be there. I chose to go there. Yeah. So that's if, if they ask me to do that, I will. If I go into a mosque and they say I have to wear a burqa or a whatever, whatever it is that, that they want, I will wear it if I'm that into going into that mosque. And same thing for a synagogue. You yeah. Know, the synagogue might say, well, all the women have to sit on this side and all the men have to sit on that side. Well, I'm not really into segregating people by gender. Um, if you want to visit, you know, I'll, I'll, yeah, if I go, Yeah, I'll go visit and I'll do that if that's what I want to, you know, if I want to see it. Uh, but it's totally different if every store, every sidewalk, every federal building, you suddenly have to wear those things. 
I don't think anybody should have to wear it outside. I think like they're lying when they say you have to wear it outside. It's wrong. Like that's not even the science. The science says if you're outside, there should be enough. Um, there is no science about it. It's like a religion. And, it is. And the thing is, yes, you should respect the rights of the owner. But when I know that the owner doesn't really want me to wear anything, it's just the owner is being forced yeah, to, is. to put up a sign that says I'm supposed to wear something. Uh, and the owner looks the other way when I don't wear it. I don't think I'm hurting anybody, you know? You're not hurting anybody, but here's the thing. There are people, okay, they're wearing the mask and they're not socially distancing. Like they're doing all the things like supposedly that, you know, like getting close, like, but they think it's okay now because, oh, like, but there are people that wore the mask and still got COVID. It didn't like keep their, it's just not true, but you can't even have this discussion with anybody anymore because they're like, no, you're a good person. That's a bad person. And I'm sick of it. I'm like, no, I just, it makes me not want to participate in that those conversations and I probably made a mistake that I did again because you know those people are always right you can never tell them they're virtuous and you're not <laughs> yeah so oh, I don't mean I'm just saying in general I guess I just take I'm just so tired of it and nobody talks about how disgusting masks are how come we don't talk about that like how no. gross they I, I don't know there's a, a danger of getting um, bacteria in your throat. What oh, yeah. Is, uh, I choke on it sometimes, but I have to pretend like I'm not choking. You know, because that does, that never would happen. You, you can't choke with your mask on. You can breathe perfectly. But yeah. why, why am I choking sometimes and feeling like I can't breathe? Please explain that to me. I don't know. <laughs> well, in my case, I just can't do it. I can't. Well, I really can't do it either. I just, they said, well, we have to. But I always knew it was going to be a problem because um, I didn't like going to the dentist the few times I did. And I, they would tell me to breathe through my nose. And I can't really breathe through my nose. Like, it's just a breathing impediment I've always had. I'm not somebody that breathes through my nose. I breathe through my mouth. So I feel like. Me too. Yeah, but nobody really believes you. Like when you say this, they're just like, oh, it's fine. You'll find one that's good. But I finally just have to wear the thinnest one possible. I'm not going to wear a double mask. Like, I, but see, this is the thing. Like, if somebody's not wearing a mask on my own time, I just don't care. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh my God, you're not wearing a mask. You better go put that on. You hate your grandmother. Like, that thought <laughs> never entered my head. Like, I just don't understand. Like, it is though everybody's parodying something that they heard on media say well if you love your grandmother you'll do it but i don't know did these people to be honest with you were these people always nice to their grandmothers i don't know i heard people say some pretty malicious things about their grandmother but all of a sudden they're all so i'm going down a rabbit hole of this i just don't have the time to think bad things about people who might have an issue with wearing the mask and i don't think they're all rebels either Sometimes people forget their mask, but then there's no, like, oh, my God, you forgot it. Like, how could you forget it? Like, it's like it's like it's a headscarf or something. Now. <laughs> really? like It's, it's so becoming a moral issue for a lot of people. That's what I'm saying. It, oh. it's, it's just like religion. It is. Well, here's another thing, too. Where do you eat and drink with the mask on? Because you really have to go find a place all by yourself, like not around anybody, to eat and drink. But then some people, they just, they do it. Like, they take it on and off as they please. But I don't feel like I can because I feel like somebody's, like, get mad at me or something. But it seems, but those are the same people that are like, well, everybody that doesn't wear a mask isn't good. But I see them taking it off as much as they want to eat and drink. So, yeah. Another thing, too, is I don't even like to eat that much when I wear a mask because I'm going off topic. I feel like I'm going to choke after I eat because it makes food get stuck in my throat and then it comes back up and it's like a suction and it's really bad. And I can't explain this to anyone, but they keep saying it's so easy. It's the easiest thing on the planet. I don't like it one bit, but it's never going to go away. They're never, I think now pretty much every public building is. But here's another irony I don't get. People are eating inside again, right? 
Yeah. So you can take off your mask to eat, but you have to put it back on all of a sudden when you're not eating anymore. How does it magically, like, where, like, that's not science. That's just being, it's just being kind of precious about something, really. It is not science. And, you know, that's why I said I appreciated Dr. Romani saying, listen, it's some people believe it works. Other people don't believe it works. But why not show respect to the beliefs of somebody else you would in a religious situation? But the thing is, is you can't suddenly take a country, everybody in the country, and ask them to subscribe to the same religion. No, you can't. And here's another thing, too. What if a group of people decide, okay, they're going to they're gonna be safe. They're going to kind of play by the rules. So they're going to just not really interact with people. And they're going to just meet with themselves. And they're not wearing masks. Like now sometimes their neighbors will report them for having a gathering. It's kind of weird. Is that yeah. kind? It seems kind of nosy. <laughs> More than nosy. It's kind of um, fascist. I'm sorry, but it is. Oh, it's fascist for sure. I mean, that's what turned Lord, um, Rose Wilder Lane. She said that she almost felt like she was becoming a communist before she traveled abroad. And the thing that made her more of a libertarian was actually traveling abroad and seeing how in Italy they would start monitoring people if they were meeting at each other's houses. And they're like, what are you doing at each other's houses? Are you having like some political meeting to overthrow Mussolini? Like, it's interesting. You know, that's where... Like she was able to change her mind was traveling abroad. It kind yeah. of she wrote something very interesting about that, by the way. Uh do you know which book it was in? Um, it was just like a forward to one of the little house books I have. It was like a special edition. Oh. I don't think they would have that nowadays though, because she would be basically saying that she's not like part of the establishment. I don't think that, or if, I don't even know, like, do they even, I mean, I know they still publish the Little House books, but I have this bad feeling, Aya, like I like the Little House books. I have this bad feeling, are they gonna say soon that they can't publish them anymore? I don't know. It's getting yeah. kind of weird. It, it's quite possible that the Little House books will be canceled like everything else. It could be, okay, where was it? I think, okay, I know, actually, it wasn't in a little house book. It was in a book of letters that Rose and Laura wrote to each other. And it oh, was like okay. a little essay. I'll have to find the book. I have it in my book somewhere. But it was basically like a collection of letters that um, Laura sent to Rose when she was coming out west to visit Rose when she was working in a newspaper. Oh, and then there was an essay at the end where Rose was just talking about she had traveled abroad and previously, like in the previous years leading up to the, her trip, she kind of said she felt like she was becoming a communist, but she realized when she was becoming abroad what she was becoming and it turned her off because she's like, this is not American. Like, why would we want to monitor people meeting at each other's houses? Like, yeah. and how fascist that was and just how, yeah, I thought that was very interesting. It is. I, I would like to read that. I'll have to find it. I just remember reading it many years ago in that book. I had to think about which book was it. I'll have to look and see. I should still have the book somewhere. But anyway, yes, like Rose Wilder Lane, like travel. It's funny, though. There's a lot of Americans. Wasn't there an American that had studied in China? And she, he came to realize how the Chinese system was flawed after being there for a while. Oh, is that are you talking about the video I sent you? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yes, that definitely happened. And he was anti-Trump all the way until he started to realize, hey, maybe some of the things Trump says actually make a certain amount of sense. And not that he still, you know, he still doesn't like Trump, but he began to realize that, you know, Trump hatred was a little going a little too far. It's going too far. Like, look, I'm not a fan of Trump, but I began to realize, like, you know, sometimes Trump would actually tell the truth about something, but people hated him so much. And then here's the thing. I'm not even, like, super excited about the vaccine, but he was, it was a Trump thing. Like, that was his thing. Remember, every day he'd talk about yeah. the vaccine, wanting the yeah. vaccine and blah, blah, blah. And he did a lot of the work for that to happen. But now, like, they're acting like Biden did it, but he wasn't even in office at the time. Like, whatever, like, basically, like, you're congratulating one status for the thing the other status did, so. Yeah, and people have been asking lately, when is the first um, 
State of the Union address supposed to be for Biden? I thought it was already supposed to have happened. Did it? Wasn't it supposed to? I thought he may have already had one, but honestly, I haven't been paying as much attention lately. I feel bad. I used to be really on top of those things, but I thought he may have already had one. I can look and see. Okay. Okay. I might have missed it. I just didn't know. Like I used to I used to be in the know about all those things, but just after the last few presidencies, I'm like, does it really matter anymore? They're all gonna say the same status thing pretty much, <laughs> you know. Let me check. Okay. I'm just curious. So when was his first state of the union? I guess, okay. They said it had no annual requirement, but they always had a State of the Union on usually, you know, by February 20th. Yeah, okay, go see. ahead. I found something trending politics talking about this because I thought maybe it had one. I just missed it, but I think we would have heard about it. So Joe Biden's State of the Union address suddenly appears to be off for now. He's not going to make one. Interesting. Well, I guess you don't have to make one when Kamala Harris is your mother. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, she's kind of like telling him where to go and what to do. Like, maybe he's not able to make one. Maybe he'll fall asleep. Maybe that's why he's not having one. I don't know. <laughs> well, people are gossiping about that. <laughs> I, I had this funny joke that she was going to take him to the bathroom and show him how to wash his hands, but nobody thought it was funny. They're like, that's not funny, Julia. I thought it was pretty funny because it's kind of true. Like she's everywhere. It's kind of like Dick Cheney all over again. I'm like, well, we know who's running the show. Like it's not him, obviously. I don't think it's her either, by the way. Yeah, it's probably not her either, but her politics are more in line with like the dynamic or basically China. Like yeah. her, she has, she's more of that. And I know that they're pushing back on Biden now, actually, because Biden said something. He said, that he was never in favor of Medicare for all. And now they're saying that he's wrong and he needs to accept this and he needs to do what they're telling him to do. And how dare he not? I'm like, oh, what? So you wanted him to be president, but now you're saying he, he has to do what you want. And now they want to get rid of the filibuster because yeah. they don't want anybody, like they don't think that the um, opposition, which by the way, the Republicans are not like a tiny minority. It's still about half and half, if not more because of this last election. It's, questionable in some ways you can't just squash the opposition and if they don't agree with like passing certain legislation the filibuster has been for years like that's part of parliamentary procedure going way back if you know that's anything right about uh, yeah no we are supposed to enable people to keep legislation from passing because really congress shall make no law is the most important part of the constitution and you know the most important part of the bill of rights congress shall make no law yeah filibuster was actually part of the original constitution they were going to find a different way to end debates but they decided to go with the filibuster it was not officially used until 1837 but it's Main, it's a fixture of parliamentary procedure throughout, you know, the history of the world. Why are we going to eradicate something that's part of how our government functions and was pretty much adopted by the constitutional founders just because people don't like it? Oh, we want more of a liberal country. Well, there's still people that aren't liberal. You don't get everything you want, you know. I, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> do people know that? I don't know. Well, Julia, do people know that we've lost our country? No, they don't. And I think China's running the show anyway. So I'm yeah. sorry, I made this all political, didn't I? This was supposed to be about painting. <laughs> so how do you like my colorization? Let me check. I have to see. Oh, it's looking really nice, Aya. The blue is beautiful. I like how it's light blue for the young man and like blue for I think Claire's in the middle, right? Uh yeah, Clara. Yeah, yeah I, I like her darker blue. It's look and the hair. Like I think you got the blonde spot on and the darker brown, and he has slightly lighter brown. I like it. You're doing good. Yeah, so it's kind of like a postcard. It it, it does have that colorized look to it. But I I just thought I'd try this technique. 
I love it. And I think you should do a series of sibling portraits. Like it should be a playlist on your YouTube channel if it's not already. I yeah, recommend I think that. I will. Yeah, I think I Because now you have enough of them. So are you going to paint another family next week? I'm just curious. I don't know what I'll do next week. And you know what? I might just have to take a week off to work on my taxes. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm I'm waiting until April 16th. I don't care. I'm going to wait because, they, you know, they changed the date on us. And then, I don't know. I don't really want to pay tax right now. I'm going to owe. So, I'm not. Yeah. Uh, well, what I'm saying is people keep saying I should do all sorts of stuff in my spare time. But you don't have spare time. You just yeah. Have to, I know yeah. you don't have. I don't have spare time either. I there is no such thing as spare time. It's not true. Yeah. So uh, if you guys don't see me next week, uh, painting it might be because I'm working on my taxes. But then I'll be back the week after that. Sounds good. I hope that you have a wonderful day doing all your um things with your animals it's a lot of work but it sounds fun at the same time i love seeing the things you post about the ducks especially well would you like to show us uh the progress on your shamrock before we say goodbye okay let me show i haven't gone into the shamrock part i'm basically just like still doing the exterior because i'm gonna wait for it to dry I'm going a little crazy and I'm just layering it. I don't know why I'm having too much fun with this and probably wasting paint, but. Oh, it's I'm, nice. Um, it's very yeah, nice. It's, yeah. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to make the shamrock like more unified. I'm going to solidify. I'm just doing what I should have done. If I could do this again is I would have done it one color, let it dry and then painted the shamrock on top, but I'm kind of doing it backwards. So I have to fix it. <laughs> well, that's okay. Um, we, it's, always good to experiment right yeah right and this is more just like a fun to me this is a fun painting because it's just kind of like a shape painting but i like it because it just if i haven't painted for a long time it just kind of it's easier to do That's oh. all. yeah well you know what i did was i i had i basically did the black and white version of my painting so all i had to do was just add a little color to it. so it was fun painting with you yeah, it was. We should do it again next. Oh, no, you're doing taxes. Maybe the week after. Maybe the week okay, after. the week after we'll do that. But I'll see you tomorrow at 8.45 p.m. Central Time uh, on my other channel. Sounds good. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.